Welcome to another episode of Metal Mastermind. Today we're going to give you a complete beginner's guide to miking your amp for metal guitar. All right, we're going to jump right into this complete guide to miking your guitar amp. Now, real quick, you can use the techniques that we're going to share for live playing. If you're playing a show and you want to mic your amp for that, you can definitely use the techniques. However, this tutorial is more catered to miking your guitar amp and recording that sound. So we're also going to get into the recording components as well. So we're going to split this up into two sections. Section one, we're going to cover all of the components that you need to mic your amp and record that sound as well. And then in the second section, we're gonna go over some different mic placements that we want you to try. And of course, you're gonna hear some examples as well. Now, make sure you watch the entire video because at the end, we've got a little bonus for you that's really gonna help you get a better metal guitar sound when you're recording with a mic amp. Now, the first two components here are the obvious ones, your guitar and your amp. But real quick, we wanna share what we're using for this tutorial. So the guitar is the ESP E2 Horizon FR7. This is a seven string guitar here, and we've got active EMG 707 pickups. The amp that we're gonna be using for this tutorial is the EVH 5153 EL34 tube version. And this is the 50 watt head with the matching 212 cabinet. Now on that note, no pun intended, that doesn't mean you have to go out and buy a super expensive guitar or super high and amp to do this you can use these techniques that we're about to go over in this tutorial using any guitar and any amp you have in fact we always encourage you to apply the techniques that we share with you to the gear that you have right now now let's talk about effects and stomp boxes real quick so in a live scenario if you're playing a gig or playing a live show just use whatever pedals and effects you normally use and then of course you can skip ahead to the mic techniques that we'll cover in section two however remember this tutorial is catered to recording your mic amp that being the case you want a dry as signal as you can possibly get so you don't really want to use things like delays and reverbs and, and chorus pedals and that sort of thing because those are things you can add after the fact in fact we've got a video on how to add effects to your recorded guitar track up here and we'll put a link to that video in the description of this video as well so you can go back and watch that after this now since we're metal guitar players here and we're playing through high gain amps you do need a noise gate you don't want to capture that noise in your recording so you do want a noise gate and in some cases depending on the amp you may need that overdrive pedal now here the EVH 5153 EL34 tube we're using the red channel this channel does not necessarily need an overdrive it gives you a really nice clean distortion sound and saturation without an overdrive pedal however a lot of amps I would venture to say that most high gain amps you're going to want some sort of overdrive in front of that just to clean up and tighten up that initial sound. Now let's talk about the mic. So in this case, we're using the good old trusted SM57, the Shure SM57 mic. And if you're on a budget, there's really nothing that can beat this mic. Now on top of that, we've got a mic stand for this amp. You can see this little Nomad mic stand here. And a stand like this is almost perfect for recording your guitar amp. Now you could use a boom stand if you wanted, uh, but you want some sort of stand so that you can have the proper mic placement, which again, we're gonna talk about that more in section two coming up. And with that, of course, you want an XLR or AKA mic cable. Now we're gonna plug the other end of that XLR cable into our next component that we need for recording your mic amp, and that's an audio interface. Now in this case, we're using the PreSonus Quantum 2 interface. However, we don't want you to get hung up on having to have an expensive interface because there are plenty of budget-friendly options out there for audio interfaces that will do the trick for recording your mic amp. In fact, we have another video on cheap versus expensive interfaces up here. We'll also leave a link to that video in the description of this YouTube video. Now that audio interface is gonna connect to your computer. That's our next component here. And in this case, we're using a late 2013 iMac with an i7 processor and this originally came with 16 gigs of RAM. Typically 8 gigs of RAM is going to be the minimal that you need to run recording software which we'll get into that next 
but it doesn't mean you have to go out and buy a super expensive computer. Chances are you can use the one that you have right now for this purpose. And that leads us to our recording software, which is known as our DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. Now in this case, we're using PreSonus Studio One Pro. However, there's an abundance of different software programs out there you can use to capture your recordings with. I know one of the more user-friendly ones and budget-friendly DAWs is Reaper. That's a really good option. Studio One's a good option too. And of course, you've got things like Pro Tools, Ableton Live, Cubase, and so forth. The last component we wanna talk about is your monitoring system. And we highly recommend recording with headphones. The reason why is because when you're recording your guitar, you don't necessarily want your monitors, your studio monitors cranked up because there's a chance that your mic, this mic in your amp, could pick that up and that's not something you want to capture in the recording. So it's best to record with headphones on. And these are just a really inexpensive pair of KRK KNS 6400 headphones. So that pretty much wraps up the components that you need to mic your amp and capture that tone in a recording. Now it's time for the fun part. Here in section two, we're gonna talk about and hear some different mic placements. In fact, we've got five different mic placements that we wanna share with you. We're gonna show you how we place the mic and then we'll let you hear it as well. And remember, we've got a little bonus tip for recording your metal guitars to get a really awesome sound at the end of this video. So hang around for that. All right, so first things first, we're gonna be placing our mic for these first four placements pretty close to the grill. It's not gonna to be touching it, but it's gonna be probably about a half inch to an inch away from the speaker there from the grill. And the reason for this is because we're using what's called a dynamic microphone. The Shure SM57 is a dynamic microphone. And what that means is it's not as sensitive as a condenser microphone, which is what you would normally record vocals with, because it's gonna pick up all the essence of your voice and all those little nuances. Well, this dynamic microphone here, it's just gonna pick up what's right there in front of it. And this particular mic is great for recording loud sources like a metal guitar amp, a high gain amp. So the first mic placement we're gonna test here is we're gonna place the mic almost directly in front of the center of the cone. And what you can expect from this is kind of that more higher tinny sound. So let's hear what that sounds like. Mic placement number two, we're gonna do just the opposite, okay? We're gonna move that mic all the way to the outer edge of that speaker there. And what you can expect here is a little bit darker of a sound and it might not have quite as much clarity. Mic placement number three is gonna be somewhat the typical, one of the typical places for metal music, for recording metal guitars. And it's gonna be that happy medium. We're not right there in the center of the cone getting that really high tinny sound, but we're not so far towards the edge that is dark and muffled. It's kind of that happy medium right in between those two places. So let's hear what mic placement number three sounds like. <laughs> Mic placement number four, we're gonna change things up a little bit. We're gonna do something a little different here. If you notice the other three mic placements, the mic was directly like flat in front of the speaker, in front of the grill there. Well, this time we're actually gonna tilt the mic a little bit, and this technique is called off-axis mic placement. So we're gonna tilt the mic a little bit. Let's hear what this sounds like. Now, 
mic placement number five. This is our last one, and I've got a little trick to show you. We're going to do something different again. You know, all of our mic placements have been right there in front of the grill, just right up on it, about a half inch, inch away. We're going to try something new. We're going to pull that mic back about a foot away from the grill here, and just let's hear what that sounds like. So now you know a little bit more about mic placements, okay, and one thing I want to point out here, there's, there's really not a wrong way to do this. There's only capturing a good sound versus the sound not being so great, and you want to capture the type of sound that you're looking for for your music, not necessarily someone else's sound. It is good to review different mic placements to see what other people are doing and try those out but make sure you're happy with the tone, that you're happy with the sound, and then of course that it sounds good in the mix, okay? That's what's the most important about mic placement. Now, once you record your guitar tracks and you get the tones, the tracks that you want to keep, there's a post-production process that needs to happen just to make those guitar tracks sound a little better and fit better in the overall mix, and we've actually got a complete tutorial on that where we record some guitar tracks and then Ken dives into the studio with those tracks and shares exactly what to do with those tracks to make sure they're going to sound good in the mix. And the link to that video will also be in the description of this video too, so you've got a lot of good material to watch after you finish this one. Alright, now it's time for the bonus tip that I promised you in the beginning of this video, and this is really going to make your guitar tracks sound amazing, and it's also going to help you use what you've already recorded. You're not just going to use one track. Before we get to that though, I want to let you know we are giving away our free home studio guide. There's a link in the description for that, so make sure you download that if you haven't already. Alright, so the tip I want to give you is we're going to pick two of our best guitar tracks that we just recorded. Remember, we recorded five tracks with different mic placements, and we're going to use those two tracks together. Let's hear what that sounds like, and then I'll tell you what I did after you hear this little clip. So what I did here is I just took two guitar tracks, I hard panned one all the way to the left, I hard panned the other one all the way to the right. Now a couple things happened with this, okay? First of all, you're not going to play the second guitar track or any guitar track exactly the same way you played the first guitar track. You're going to have these little nuances in there, these slight little differences. On top of that, you've got two different guitar tones. Now they're not completely different because we used the same amp, but those two tones are slightly different because of the different mic placements. So what do all these things do? Well, the panning of the tracks, you've got those little nuances that you're going to hear, right? They're not going to be up the middle, they're going to be in stereo, true stereo effect, and you've also got a slightly different tone for that second guitar track. This gives your guitar tracks more life, and it actually just brings the mix out there and just makes it sound more organic and lively. So this is just a little recording tip that we wanted to share with you guys at the end of this video. Now, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial here. We're going to follow up with this tutorial with a blog post on our website, metalmastermind.com because we want to add some more content to this in case we missed anything in the video. But that link will also be in the description of this YouTube video along with the other videos that you want to catch up on as well if you haven't seen those yet. And all these are geared towards just really helping you get a solid recording and just learning more about the process, both miking your amp, the post-production, and, and the whole nine yards just to get a good sound. So. We really hope this video and all of our videos help you. Also, don't forget to get your free home studio guide. Grab that if you don't have it already. That's in the description as well. Guys, please give this video a thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next video.